In today's video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you every new ranged weapon in Fallout 76 and a short description as to how you can actually acquire one for yourself. So to be totally clear about this, it's all the new ranged weapons. Things like the lever action rifle, something that appeared in Fallout 4, will not be in this video. If you actually want a description, there are timestamps below as to when I talk about everything. And in addition, it's not just the ranged weapons, but I'm including grenades in that category also. I'm going to do melee weapons in a separate video because one, many of them just aren't all that interesting, and two, this video took a really freaking long time. For some of these, as you'll see as I explain how you get them, it requires server hopping or just finding a really rare item at a specific vendor. If you guys do enjoy this video, you can leave a like or subscribe, again, timestamps below if you're looking for something specifically, and even beyond that, as I actually explain to you guys how you find these weapons, that's just one of the choices. Many have multiple routes to actually get, especially some of the more common ones, I'm just giving you one option, or one can confirm spawn. But either way, starting things off, we do have the Blunderbuss, one of the really cool new black powder items in Fallout 76. Compared to the other characters in this family, like the black powder pistol or black powder rifle, this one kind of just falls in the middle of the other two, it seems like. It doesn't have the best range, it has a little bit of a longer reload than the black powder pistol, but oftentimes I find it does a bit more damage. Locating it for yourself, you'll pretty consistently find it spawn in this little house outside of Helvetia. It's on a 100% chance, so you might have to server hop a couple of times but it's very high, probably over 70%. But of course, with the littler brother of the blunderbuss, we have the black powder pistol. As I mentioned before, it typically does a bit less damage, but also has a much faster reload. And for me at least, the black powder pistol was the sweet spot of the black powder weapons. Especially at early levels, getting one of these things, you do tons of damage in a quick burst. The reload, although long, isn't horrible. And this is one I definitely used on my character for quite a while, especially at some of the earlier levels. You'll typically be able to find multiple of these, at the Felipe Battlefield Cemetery, no matter what level you are. In my experience, it spawns there 100% of the time, unless you yourself recently looted it. Then we do have the single action revolver. This thing is a ton of fun to use, especially when you can successfully one-shot people with it. Taking down a couple of Scorched or whatever other enemy you do stumble upon with this thing is very satisfying. They're not that rare. If you just play the game, you'll probably stumble upon one. But if you're looking for a static spawn location, there actually is one that's relatively low level right outside of Vault 76 around a skeleton and a little fire. Although be warned, the reload on this is probably one of the longest in the game, which can definitely lead to you being caught in a pickle more than once while using this thing, but it is just so freaking satisfying. Then we do have the 10mm SMG, one of the ones that I think a lot of people really like, and then they'll get it and realize, oh, this thing kind of sucks. In and of itself, it's not the worst weapon, but the rate at which it actually dispenses ammo and how much damage it does, there's just a lot of better options out there. It without a doubt still looks cool, and let's say you just have way too much 10 millimeter, this is a great way to get rid of it. Pretty much 100% of the time, you could find one under Mama Dulce's in one of the locked cages. In order to get down there, you're going to need the manager's ID card, and there's going to be a variety of different enemies, but I found it here several times, and it is relatively low level. Then we do have the Ultra Sight laser gun. You could technically modify this into more of a rifle, but I'll just include it with the rest of the pistols. This one's pretty interesting. Ultra Sight weapons are something new in Fallout 76, and as you can tell, they fire a green beam instead of the traditional red beam. Outside of that, they do have totally separate weapon mods, so even if you find some cool stuff for your regular laser gun, they won't apply to the Ultra Sight variant. And the shtick with these things are they typically are significantly better against Scorched and in general have higher durability. They'll take longer to break. So a lot of times if you actually find one of these, I would save it until you encounter other Scorched or even the Scorched Beast Queen. As far as actually finding this thing, you'll likely find at least one along the Brotherhood quest line. They have a lot of this kind of material with them. But even beyond that, you could often find one at the Watoga trader known as Phoenix, who is part of the Brotherhood faction. But let's say, hey, you're not a huge fan of the Brotherhood or even the Ultra Sight color scheme. Alternatively, we do have the Enclave Plasma Pistol or Plasma Rifle, however you edit this thing. This is another new faction-specific weapon that really is actually quite a bit worse. At the end of the day, it really seems like the only major difference with this Enclave Plasma Pistol is the Enclave paint job it has, which admittedly is pretty cool, especially if you're Enclave represent. You'll be able to find these things in the White Springs Bunker after going through some of the Enclave quest line, but I'm sure there's other ways to actually acquire it. And it definitely looks cool, but outside of that, it still kind of just is a plasma pistol, very similar to the rest. It seems like it may have slightly higher durability, but considering the plasma pistol in and of itself is kind of a higher level weapon to begin with, the difference simply isn't nearly as noticeable as between the Ultra State laser gun and the regular laser gun. But then getting back around to our fan favorite with the black powder items, we do have the black powder 
rifle. This one's fairly easy to spawn. It almost always spawns this little Civil War looking building right outside of Harper's Ferry. When you actually fast travel here, you'll basically be looking directly at it. Within that building, you'll probably find some other black powder items, but almost always a black powder rifle. It has a significantly longer reload than the black powder pistol while doing slightly more damage. As I mentioned before, I really think the black powder pistol is the sweet spot, but if you really just want to save something for a burst of damage or even a critical hit, the black powder rifle may be what you want. But even this bad boy actually has a bigger brother, and that's going to be with the dragon. Despite its name, this actually isn't a unique weapon. It's just a very rare variant of the black powder rifle actually having four barrels. Despite that, it doesn't actually take four shots in it. You kind of reload it as if it does take four shots, but it only uses one ammo. This of course having the longest reload out of all the black powder weapons, but doing by far the most damage. And if you're going to save something for a critical hit, you'd probably want to use this thing. As I mentioned, it's very rare. Sometimes you'll get it as a high level drop off of some enemies in the mire. But alternatively, one consistent way I've found it is actually the trader in Harper's Ferry. So go get the black powder rifle and make a pit stop and pick up this thing too. This guy isn't necessarily in an obvious location, but basically fast travel to Harper's Ferry, run along, cross the tops of these trains, and kind of just follow the route I do. And again, in my experience, I had a server hop three or four times and I was able to find this beauty for myself. Next up, we do have the crossbow, one that seems really cool in concept and honestly in execution, using this thing is very satisfying but it definitely doesn't have the highest DPS or even the highest damage. If you miss your first shot and there's a tough enemy coming your way, you might be in trouble. And even beyond that, it really just doesn't have that high of damage even with that one shot. But hey, maybe you just don't care about any of that. For this one, it seems like the plans actually spawn in a static location. It's gonna be in this little target practice area right outside of the Pioneer Scout Camp. Even beyond that, there's several other little target practice areas where you could find crossbows or bolts all around the map. Again, the thing is very satisfying to use it's just very difficult to use successfully. A little fun fact though, in the files of Fallout 76, we actually know in the future we're also getting a compound bow. So perhaps these two weapons will be fleshed out even further and become maybe even more viable through buffs. All right, so one I'm confident at least most of you have used at some point is going to be the pump action shotgun. You could find this on all varieties of enemies, whether it be scorched or even where you probably will find the most with mole miners. You could typically find these mole miners right outside of a mine and with that comes shotguns and shotgun ammo, or even sometimes at the big excavator site, you could find quite a few of these guys. The pump action is actually a really cool weapon in Fallout 76 for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, it does have that reload fix. So let's say you fire one shot and you go to reload, you'll only have to reload one shot, unlike the lever action rifle, for example. Although they have confirmed that change is coming to the lever action in 2019. But even beyond that, it has the long sought after pump action animation, something that took a while for even Fallout 4 modders to bring into the game. And actually, even beyond all of that, something I haven't been talking too much about in this video, this has a lot of different mods for it. So of course, in the Fallout games, weapon modding is a pretty big component. But what you'll find for the vast majority of new weapons in Fallout 76 is they have only a handful of mods, like three or four at most. Most of the black powder weapons literally have one or none. Fortunately for the pump action shotgun, that's a different story. It actually has a ton of different mods that you can equip to this, and it really is probably one of the coolest and best new weapons in the game, especially at early levels. But moving on to what I would call the juiciest new category with Fallout 76 weapons, the heavy. It seems like Bethesda realized that Fallout 4 was really lacking here, so they added in a bunch of new content for this one. First and foremost, we do have the 50 cal machine gun, and this is actually a pretty cool weapon, probably the most viable of this category. It has a fairly high rate of fire, meaning that you can actually see your ammo disappearing, unlike some of the other things in this where it just kind of disappears in an instant, but also is fairly viable, especially if you get a legendary version of this. Although have fun finding ammo for this one because it is fairly expensive, and with recent nerfs to the workshops, it is hard to actually get your hands on it sometimes. But if you actually do want to try this out, it does have a static spawn location where you'll pretty much find it 100% of the time. It's just going to be on this road in the Savage Divide. You're going to find a broken down truck and on the back of that truck, you'll have a 50 cal machine gun. Although with pretty much all of the automatic weapons in this game, you'll find that it probably doesn't do as much damage as you'd hope and you may end up eventually moving back to some of your single shot options. Next up, we do have the Gatling gun. This having a significantly slower rate of fire than the 50 cal machine gun, but of course doing higher damage. It 
definitely can be viable in the right situation, arguably one of the most viable out of all of the heavy weapons, because you could actually get a pretty good DPS with this thing if you have the ammo, and it doesn't really burn through ammo all that fast. Although, good luck finding it. It was probably in the top three hardest weapons to actually locate on this list. I took many hours trying to find this freaking thing, but I was successful. So a couple of tips. In my research, people said it sometimes spawns at this place called the White Springs Lookout, just outside of the White Springs Resort. I never successfully found it there, but hey, if you want to try that, that's one option. Alternatively, you can just purchase it from Phoenix, the Watoga Trader. This might require quite a bit of server hopping or luck, but that's where I personally found mine. And even beyond that, it was actually at a pretty good price. And while you're there, you may also find the worst heavy weapon in this scheme, that with the LMG or the MG42. I found it at Phoenix a couple of times, so if you're really dedicated, it might take a little over an hour, but you probably will find it here. Or just ask a friendly player like I did, and they may just dump it off on you, because again, this thing sucks. It only does eight or nine damage per shot, but it uses ammo at an insanely high rate. And although 308 ammo isn't the rarest in the world, with the rate at which it goes through this, you'll probably run out very quickly. But as you can see here, even with how many bullets I'm dumping into some of these robots, they don't go down quickly. It certainly is fun to use. It made me feel kind of rich for a couple of minutes when I realized how much ammo I was actually using up, but it must have one of the lowest damage per seconds of all the heavy weapons. And once that novelty wears off, you'll realize it's heavy, not that good, and you'll probably just want to get rid of it. But hey, at least it looks cool, right? And we do have the auto grenade launcher. This one's definitely fun to use, especially if you have a plethora of 40 millimeter grenades. Although it doesn't do a ton of damage, it definitely does decent damage, especially area of effect damage. And if you really want to feel rich, use this thing for a little while and you'll realize how rare and expensive 40 millimeter grenades are. If you actually want to find this, it's not the easiest. It definitely is one of the rarer ones, although you probably can figure it out or even buy one off of someone. One place you might have some luck is in the Wendigo cave. Basically, the end Wendigo at this, like the boss of the area, has a confirmed heavy weapon spawn. So you might get it. You might be like me and get a harpoon gun alternatively, but it probably is one of the more easy ways to actually find this thing outside of buying it. But again, they're not super rare. I found mine just in normal play while taking on some higher level enemies in the mire. And then we do have the little brother to the auto grenade launcher, that with the M79. This is just a single action grenade launcher. It's going to fire one at a time. And as you'd probably guess, it's significantly worse than the auto grenade launcher. And although after finding this thing, it definitely is a lot of fun to use and very satisfying, it really isn't that good. You would think some of these grenade weapons would be very valuable at higher levels, but they're really not. Only doing 100 to 200 damage per grenade, and again, how much grenades actually cost, mean that you're probably better off just using a more traditional single shot weapon. But again, if you are looking for one of these, you could typically find one right outside of the Big Ben Tunnel. One of the Scorch there, typically the Scorch leader of the area, will actually drop one as well as some ammo to go along with it. Alternatively, if you really like the one you have, you could get some ammo using this same method. Then we do have the Gatling Plasma. I would actually say this is probably one of the coolest looking new weapons we got in this game. Unfortunately, it still does suffer from a glitch where the first time you take this thing out, however many plasma cores you have in your inventory is how many shots will be loaded. So if you have one plasma core, you'll only have one shot, shoot once and have to start reloading. It still is pretty fun to use and definitely looks cool as you see those flurry of plasma shots in the sky. But like a lot of the other weapons in the heavy category, it could definitely use some love in some updates. If you actually want to get it, you could pretty much 100% of the time actually find one of these in the White Springs bunker by doing the Enclave questline. But then we do have the Ultra Sight Gatling Laser. And I gotta say, through filming this video, through acquiring all of these various weapons, this one was by far the hardest for me to get my hands on. With that being said, I finally got one by somebody else letting me borrow theirs for literally nothing. So a huge shout out to the user by the name Alantis, if I'm pronouncing that right. He effectively made this video possible because I literally got the footage for this one as I'm editing the rest of the video. But yeah, otherwise, it's kind of what you'd imagine. Similar to the Ultra Sight laser gun, this one also has better stats overall, lasts a bit longer, and also fires those green beams. The paint job on this, I think, looks particularly cool, making the Gatling laser just all that much more special. And this one in particular is really good when taking on things like the Scorched Beast Queen, because you still get that bonus against Scorched. If you're looking for one of these, it's not going to be easy. Apparently, you can get it from Phoenix in Watoga, like a bunch of these other weapons, although I've never had success there. But it seems like one of the most concrete ways is either by doing the Brotherhood questline or just taking down the Scorched Beast Queen itself. Although even through trading and buying, this thing wasn't easy for me to find, so good luck on your journey. But then moving into the final category, we do have grenades and throwables. There's actually several new additions in this one for Fallout 76. One of the first ones and most interesting being the Hallucigen Gas Grenade. This is one that's just craftable by default and not the best in the game, 
seen, but definitely looks pretty freaking cool. You're gonna have to find one of the hallucinogen gas canisters, and not a ruptured one, but actually a full one. One of these pretty much always spawns in the radio tower of Wade Airport, just the tallest structure at that workshop. And after finding that, you can go to any chemistry station, craft one of these if you do have the required materials, the hardest to get, again, being that gas canister, and then you can throw it and you get your fancy new gas grenade. The effect of these is pretty interesting. It basically makes it so enemies will attack each other, a frenzy effect if you will. Although something you'll notice with this grenade and the next grenade I talk about, they have this big tendency to roll past the target. So even if you aim at somebody like you would with a traditional grenade, with these things, I don't know why, but they always just roll a little bit further. So I find I almost need to aim short to make them effective, but otherwise, especially against high level enemies, this can be very valuable in getting basic basically an extra teammate. Moving on though, we do have the pumpkin grenade. This is another really cool one. Similar to the previous grenades, what these are going to do is have a burst of smoke, and although these ones actually do passive radiation damage, they also will make it so your enemies are more susceptible to damage overall. So you'll do more damage to them after they breathe in the gas from these pumpkin grenades. In order to get these, you're gonna have to do a daily quest at the pumpkin house, literally just the quest of the pumpkin house. It's really easy, it's gonna require you to collect a couple of pumpkins from not too far away, bring them back. As a reward, you'll actually get pumpkin grenades themselves, but also the plans for these and the poison pumpkin seeds you actually need to craft these grenades. So the only real way to get them is to actually do this quest. Then we do have the orbital scan beacon. This is basically going to be a grenade you throw down to call in an orbital strike on a certain location. It's typically good against higher level enemies. It's pretty easy. You just get it from doing the enclave quest and then you do gain access to them, but this actually calls in a strike in a static location. So if you miss, you're kind of screwed. For that reason, it's not the best item in the game and I typically avoid using it and also because this happens. Then we do have the explosive bait. This is a pretty cool one. It's another quest item. You're going to get this by doing one of the quests with Rose. And then you'll actually unlock the crafting for these things. Basically, it's going to be a new throwable that's like a piece of meat with an explosive attached. It'll have a little smell that attracts animals to it, and as they come up to it, it will explode, killing those animals. For this one, I'd say it's more of a gimmick than anything else. It's kind of funny and interesting to use or just mess around with, but I haven't found myself using this over the long term. Throwing knives are something you can craft from day one at any weapons workbench. They just require a couple of steel. These things used to be super overpowered in the beta of Fallout 76, but since then, they've been significantly nerfed to the point where now I'm pretty sure most of us know they exist. It's just not really worth even making them to the point where they're just ignored. Although the throwing knives do have a bigger brother in the form of a tomahawk. You'll typically find these at a lot of those other civil war buildings where I showed you the black powder weaponry. And in particular, I almost always find one just outside of Harper's Ferry, that place I showed you earlier. It literally is just a new throwing weapon that does slightly more damage. It's cool. Sometimes if you miss, you can pick it up. And if you do end up getting the plans for these ones, it definitely could be more valuable valuable, but still worse than traditional grenades, and honestly not that great. But yeah, that's pretty much every ranged weapon in Fallout 76. I may have missed some obscure one, but I'm pretty sure I got everything outside of unique ones. Hopefully this video was informative for you. I used a lot of different sources in this. I'll have links to them all below, but some of them were YouTube videos, some of them were Reddit posts, or even Bethesda.net posts, and one really important asset was some of those trading sites. Things like Market76 and their Discord, and even the official Fallout subreddit Discord. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is probably one of the biggest videos I've made this year. It certainly took one of the longest amounts of time to actually film everything, find all these weapons. But with that, I hope to see you guys all next time. Later.